The roar of engines announces the arrival of Air Force One, a gleaming Boeing VC-137C, as it touches down at Cape Canaveral. Stepping onto the tarmac, President John F. Kennedy is met with salutes and handshakes from military personnel and NASA officials, a testament to the unity and purpose driving the American space endeavor. This aircraft, designated SAM-26000, represents the cutting edge of aviation technology, embodying the nation's commitment to progress and innovation. Its arrival signifies not just the president's physical presence, but also the weight of his vision for America's future in space. As the president descends the steps, the atmosphere is charged with anticipation. The assembled crowd, aware of the monumental goals set forth by Kennedy, sees in this moment a reaffirmation of the United States' dedication to leading the space race. The visit underscores the collaboration between government, military, and scientific communities in achieving the ambitious objective of landing a man on the moon. This historic arrival marks a pivotal point in the nation's journey toward the stars, reflecting the determination and unity that define this era of exploration. In the balmy September sun, President John F. Kennedy arrives at Cape Canaveral, Florida to witness firsthand the marvels of America's burgeoning space program. Greeted by top NASA officials, the president begins his tour with a close inspection of the Gemini spacecraft, a pivotal step in our nation's quest to conquer space. As President Kennedy tours the Gemini capsule, the world watches with bated breath. Just days earlier, on September 8th, the first Soviet missiles arrived in Cuba, setting the stage for a confrontation that would bring the world to the brink of nuclear war. Domestically, the civil rights movement is gaining momentum. In February, the Supreme Court ruled that segregation in transportation facilities is unconstitutional, reinforcing the federal government's commitment to civil rights. And in Southeast Asia, the situation in Vietnam is escalating. The U.S. has increased its military advisors and support to South Vietnam, signaling a deeper involvement in the region's conflict. President Kennedy flanked by NASA engineers standing before the gleaming body of the Gemini spacecraft. From where I stand on the far side of the cord line, the capsule appears both compact and commanding, about 19 feet long and 10 feet across, painted a hopeful white, its small forward windows reflecting the Florida sunshine. Technicians gesture sharp and assured, point toward key sections, the re-entry module at the front, domed and heat shielded, built for withstanding searing returns through the atmosphere, and the adapter segment aft, which secures to the Titan II booster beneath. I note the level of precision. Astronauts will live inside this small cone for up to 14 days, a giant leap forward from Mercury's brief solo flights. The Titan II booster looms nearby, 63 feet tall in its first stage, powered by potent liquid fuel engines using hypergolic propellants. At Cape Canaveral, President Kennedy converses with astronaut Virgil Gus Grissom, a key figure in America's space endeavors. Born in Mitchell, Indiana, Grissom's journey from a small town boy to a national hero is a testament to American determination. A decorated Korean War veteran, he flew 100 combat missions, earning the Distinguished Flying Cross. In 1959, he was selected as one of NASA's original Mercury 7 astronauts. On July 21, 1961, Grissom piloted the Liberty Bell 7 on a suborbital flight, becoming the second American in space. The mission was nearly marred when the capsule's hatch blew prematurely after splashdown, causing it to sink. Grissom narrowly escaped drowning, a harrowing experience that highlighted the perils of space exploration. Undeterred, Grissom went on to command Gemini 3 in 1965, making him the first American to fly in space twice. His contributions laid the groundwork for future missions, and his legacy continues to inspire. At Cape Canaveral, 
President Kennedy engages in a moment of camaraderie with astronauts Gus Grissom and Deke Slayton, two of the original Mercury 7. Their meeting symbolizes the collaboration between national leadership and the pioneering individuals daring to venture into the unknown. Grissom, a decorated Korean War veteran and accomplished test pilot, became the second American in space during the Mercury Redstone 4 mission. His expertise and dedication have been instrumental in advancing the nation's space endeavors. Slayton, also a seasoned test pilot, was initially slated to pilot the Mercury Atlas 7 mission. Although a medical condition postponed his flight, he has continued to play a vital role in astronaut selection and mission planning, demonstrating an unwavering commitment to the space program. This encounter underscores the unity of purpose driving America's quest to explore the final frontier, reflecting the shared vision of leaders and astronauts alike. Launch Complex 37 was calibrated for America's first heavy lift rocket, the mighty Saturn I, and its successor Saturn 1B. The Saturn I, with eight H1 engines, serve as NASA's testing ground, proving out clustered engine designs and fueling techniques. The more powerful Saturn 1B, with its new S4B upper stage, would follow, practicing crewed launches and lunar module tests from 37B. At Launch Complex 37, President Kennedy receives an in-depth briefing from Dr. Wernher von Braun, the mastermind behind America's rocket technology. Their animated discussion reflects the intricate planning required for lunar missions. Von Braun, born in 1912 in Wurzitz, Germany, was captivated by space exploration from a young age. His early fascination led him to become a pivotal figure in rocket development for the Nazis during World War II. After the war, he and his team were brought to the United States under Operation Paperclip, contributing significantly to America's missile and space programs. As the director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, Vaughn Braun spearheaded the development of the Saturn V rocket, the launch vehicle that would eventually propel astronauts to the moon. His collaboration with President Kennedy symbolizes the fusion of visionary leadership and scientific prowess driving the nation's space endeavors. Together, they look skyward, envisioning a future where American astronauts set foot on lunar soil, a dream inching closer to reality with each passing day. At Cape Canaveral's launch Complex 37, President Kennedy stands alongside Dr. Wernher von Braun, gazing up at the towering Saturn I rocket, a testament to American ingenuity and ambition. The Saturn I, developed under Vaughn Braun's guidance at NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, represents a significant leap in launch vehicle technology. Standing approximately 180 feet tall and weighing over 500,000 pounds at liftoff, the rocket's first stage is powered by eight H1 engines, collectively producing 1.5 million pounds of thrust. This powerful launch vehicle is designed to propel heavy payloads into orbit, laying the groundwork for future missions to the moon and beyond. Its successful development and testing mark a crucial step in achieving the national goal set forth by President Kennedy, landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to Earth before the decade's end. As the President and Dr. Vaughn Braun discuss the rocket's capabilities, their shared vision underscores the collaborative effort between government leadership and scientific expertise driving America's space endeavors. Inside the humming nerve center of Launch Complex 34, President Kennedy receives a detailed briefing on the intricate technologies propelling America's lunar ambitions. Surrounded by a sea of consoles, blinking indicators, and the steady voices of engineers, the President delves into the complexities of the Apollo program. Foremost among the topics is the Saturn V rocket, a marvel of engineering designed to propel astronauts beyond Earth's grasp. Standing at 363 feet, this behemoth is powered by a trio of stages, each meticulously crafted to perform a specific function in the journey to the moon. The first stage, equipped with five F-1 engines, generates a staggering 7.5 million pounds of thrust, lifting the rocket skyward. The subsequent stages continue the ascent, culminating in the spacecraft's insertion into lunar trajectory. Equally critical is the Apollo spacecraft itself, comprising the command module, service module, and lunar module. 
the CM serves as the crew's quarters and re-entry vehicle, while the SM houses propulsion and support systems. The LM, a two-stage lander, is designed to ferry astronauts to the lunar surface and back to orbit. This modular approach, known as Lunar Orbit Rendezvous, was selected for its efficiency and feasibility within the decade's timeframe. The briefing also highlights the Apollo Guidance Computer, a compact yet powerful device developed by the MIT Instrumentation Laboratory. Utilizing integrated circuits, the AGC manages navigation and control tasks, ensuring precise maneuvers during the mission. Its reliability is paramount, as it must function flawlessly in the unforgiving environment of space. As President Kennedy absorbs these technical details, he is acutely aware of the broader implications. The success of the Apollo program is not merely a scientific endeavor, but a demonstration of American ingenuity and determination. The technologies discussed here will not only carry men to the moon, but also pave the way for future explorations beyond. In a scene reminiscent of a science fiction dream turned reality, President Kennedy, accompanied by Dr. Von Braun, examines detailed models of the rockets poised to carry America to the moon. These intricate displays, showcasing the Saturn series, symbolize the nation's commitment to exploring the final frontier. Von Braun, a pivotal figure in rocketry, began his career in Germany, where he developed the V-2 rocket during World War II. Following the war, he was brought to the United States under Operation Paperclip, making significant contributions to America's missile and space programs. As the director of NASA's Marshall Space Flight Center, Von Braun spearheaded the development of the Saturn V rocket, the launch vehicle that would eventually propel astronauts to the moon. This moment, capturing the collaboration between visionary leadership and scientific prowess, underscores the United States' dedication to space exploration. The detailed models serve not only as engineering blueprints, but also as symbols of a nation's aspiration to reach beyond the stars. As the Florida sun casts long shadows over Cape Canaveral, President Kennedy, accompanied by Dr. Von Braun, embarks on a tour of Launch Complex 34. This site, a testament to American ingenuity, houses the towering Saturn I rocket, a marvel poised to propel the nation toward its lunar ambitions. Dr. Von Braun, the visionary behind the Saturn series, elucidates the complexities of the launch vehicle. The Saturn I, standing at 180 feet, is designed to deliver heavy payloads into Earth's orbit, serving as a precursor to the more powerful Saturn V. Its development marks a significant stride in the United States' quest to explore the cosmos. The President's visit to the launch pad underscores the collaborative effort between government leadership and scientific expertise. As they survey the intricate infrastructure, massive gantries, fueling systems, and control mechanisms, Kennedy gains a deeper appreciation for the challenges and triumphs that define the American space program. This moment, capturing the convergence of political will and technological prowess, epitomizes the nation's commitment to exploring the final frontier. The tour of Launch Complex 30 for not only highlights the progress achieved, but also sets the stage for the monumental endeavors that lie ahead. This historic visit comes just one day before President Kennedy's iconic address at Rice University, where he boldly declared, we choose to go to the moon. As the Florida sun casts long shadows over Cape Canaveral, President Kennedy boards Air Force One, concluding a pivotal tour of America's space frontier. Behind him stands the towering Saturn I rocket at Launch Complex 34, a symbol of the nation's ambition to reach beyond the stars. This moment encapsulates the United States' commitment to space exploration, a commitment that would soon be echoed in the President's own words at Rice University, we choose to go to the moon. The departure marks not just the end of a visit, but the continuation of a journey that would define a generation. And so concludes President Kennedy's momentous visit to Cape Canaveral, a journey through the heart of America's burgeoning space program. From the gleaming Gemini capsules to the towering Saturn rockets, the President witnessed firsthand the innovations propelling our nation toward the stars. As the engines of Air Force One roar into the sky, they carry with them not just the Commander-in-Chief, but the aspirations of a nation united in purpose and vision. The path to the moon is charted, and each step forward is a testament to American ingenuity and determination. 
This historic visit comes just one day before President Kennedy's iconic address at Rice University, where he boldly declared, we choose to go to the moon.